The European Union is a supranational organization between many different European countries and has become much more relevant in today's political atmosphere both in Europe and all over the world, with the Union especially drawing international attention in the past couple of years. The Union's growing political, economic, and geographic integration have drawn polarizations from various groups, with some Eurosceptic parties calling for greater national autonomy or even withdrawal, while on the extreme opposite end of the spectrum, others still call for even further integration or even unification as a single country. It's currently unknown what direction the various European countries will decide to take in the near future. However, there are three veteran countries of the EU that are arguably not only the original founders of the Union, but to this day retain some of the closest relations and highest levels of integration of any countries in the world. I'm of course referring to the region of Benelux. Made up of the three Western European nations of Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg, the border between these three countries is extremely ephemeral, that is, existent, albeit functionally irrelevant. The countries of Benelux are extraordinarily advanced, having some of the strongest economies and one of the most influential governments for its size, and not only that, but they also contain some of the most fascinating hybrids of New Age and Old World architecture owed to its extensive history in the most densely populated region of Europe. But who are the people of these countries, and why are they so close? The region itself has actually been influenced by many different empires from all over Europe, giving them ties to many different cultures, and the people today are divided linguistically between two main groups, although there are also regional minorities, including the language that is most closely related to English, and more on that later. Some of the first recorded history of the region dates back to the Celtic era of Europe, where most of the continent was dominated by Celtic peoples, spreading out from around modern Bavaria, reaching Belgium and the southern part of the Netherlands. However, the Celtic peoples encountered resistance after Germanic tribes from Scandinavia moved south by the 2nd century BC. The Roman period, beginning around the start of the first millennia, is what brought about the Latin culture and language to the people of southern Belgium, and the Roman provinces of Germania Inferior and Gallia Belgica, along with the technological innovations of the Roman Empire. Following the collapse of the Western Roman Empire, the old Frankish Empire was actually founded around the Low Countries, and strangely enough, the Frankish language was actually a Germanic language, which would later evolve into the Franconian Germanic dialects such as Dutch, while it also lent several loanwords to the French language. The Netherlands and Belgium had an incredibly complicated and extensive relationship with certain European powers, with the Holy Roman Empire and the Habsburg dynasty of Spain and Austria competing for control over the Low Countries, followed by Napoleonic France in the beginning of the 19th century. After the fall of Napoleon's empire in 1814, the Netherlands and Belgium entered a union for a couple of decades before Belgium decided to opt for independence for a variety of reasons. Despite the relatively small size of the Netherlands when compared to the French or Spanish, they managed to produce some of the greatest navigators of Europe and the entire world, as well as having an extensive global empire spanning every continent except for Antarctica, with a colony of New Amsterdam and the ABC Islands in North America, Dutch Guyana and Dutch Brazil in South America, Cape Colony in Africa, and lastly Formosa, Ceylon, and Indonesia in Asia. The Dutch East India Company settled Dutch traders and fishers all over the world and has resulted in an incredibly large diaspora in North America, Oceania, South Asia, and especially the Cape region of South Africa. Belgium, of course, also had an empire consisting almost entirely of the Congo and Africa with a bit of a more dark history, and as for Luxembourg, well, seeing how they were completely landlocked, they never had a colonial empire and actually lost a considerable proportion of its territory gradually to the surrounding powers such as Belgium, France, and Germany, resulting in its rather small size today, although the border of all three countries have been relatively stable since the 1840s. Let's go ahead and talk about the people of the Benelux region today, with the Netherlands being the most populous area, having over 17 million people, followed by Belgium at 11 million, and Luxembourg at half a million, giving the region a total of 29.2 million people, and an area of 29,000 square miles, or 75,000 square kilometers. 
Benelux is an extremely densely populated region, even for European standards, having an area about the same as the Republic of Ireland, yet has a population six times larger. The dominant group in the Netherlands would be the Dutch, a Germanic people closely related to the Germans, with some Dutch speakers actually being able to understand some northern dialects of German, but the reverse is far less common. Now, the people of northern Belgium, a region known as Flanders, also essentially speak a dialect of the Dutch language, yet have a separate regional identity known as Flemish, and depending on where they are, may or may not identify with the Dutch ethnic group, and although integration between the Netherlands and Belgium is extremely high, there is a fledgling secessionist movement in Flanders to either create an independent country or break away and unite with the Netherlands. Dutch-speaking Belgians make up around 60% of the population, and the region of Flanders is far more densely populated than Wallonia in southern Belgium, who are French-speaking yet similarly to the Flemish, identify regionally as Walloons rather than as Frenchmen, and despite being a minority in the country, French speakers are dominant in the capital, Brussels, which is why French was used as the predominant colonial lingua franca rather than Dutch. The identity of Belgians is thus a bit confusing and can be seen in the U.S. Census, where only three 360,000 people identified ethnically as Belgian, and this could apply to either Belgians from Wallonia or Flanders, and many Belgian Americans would simply identify as either Dutch or French, and thus the real number of Belgian Americans is far higher than the numbers would imply. People from Luxembourg are referred to as Luxembourgers or Luxembourgish, and are also Germanic, yet are closer to the Germans than the Dutch, and Luxembourgish is actually sometimes considered to be a dialect of German rather than a separate language. As mentioned earlier, the language that is most closely related to English today is the Frisian language, spoken by around half a million Frisians in the region of Friesland in the north of the Netherlands, which makes them a regional minority, yet virtually all Frisians speak Dutch as a second language. It's also important to realize that the Benelux region is most likely the most ethnically diverse region in all of Europe, perhaps tied with England or France, with there being not only regional identities of the Dutch, French, Luxembourgers, and Germans, but huge waves of immigrants from other parts of Europe, especially Italy and Portugal, and also all over the world, including areas of the former Belgian and Dutch empires, but mostly North Africa and the Middle East. Recent minorities include the multiracial Indo people of paternal Dutch and maternal Southeast Asian ancestry, most of whom fled violence in Indonesia following independence, along with the Afrikaners and Cape Colors of South Africa, both of whom also have paternal Dutch ancestry, while many from the Netherlands' former and current Caribbean territories such as Suriname and the ABC Islands have flooded into Holland, with there being more people of Surinamese descent in the Netherlands than the country of Suriname itself. Let's go ahead and discuss how a coalition of Dutch, French, and German speakers managed to put aside their differences to become one of the most united and influential forces in Western Europe and the entire Western world, with some of the world's most brilliant minds coming from the Low Countries. Even though Belgium gained independence from the Netherlands in 1839, both countries remained strong allies, especially considering the fresh memory of French expansionism to the west, or the looming threat of German imperialism to the east, and the two were one of the bloodiest battlegrounds in both World War I and II. It was in 1944, in the midst of World War II, that the three countries formed the Union of Benelux, with the region's name, of course, being a portmanteau with the first few letters of the countries of Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg, with Benelux being a political and economic agreement. Seven years later, in 1951, the Benelux region would join France, Italy, and West Germany to form the European Coal and Steel Community, which was the foundation of the European Union. Coincidentally, the first iteration of the European coal and steel community bore an uncanny resemblance to the Kingdom of the Franks in the 8th century, also being a fusion of Italic and Germanic influences, and just how the Franks were once the dominant force in Europe, it would now appear that the EU is now king of the continent, with the de facto administrative center of the EU being located in Brussels, which also serves as the administrative center of the Benelux Union, which is still in effect to this day, giving the Low Countries an additional layer of integration. There have actually been calls in the recent past for complete political unification of the Benelux countries, or at least Belgium and the Netherlands, seeing how they share so much in the way of culture, language, and history. Currently, around 60% of people in the Netherlands would support unification only with Flanders, while around 40% of the Flemish would. And although it's unknown what percent of Walloons from French-speaking Belgium would support unification with the Netherlands, it would most likely be incredibly small, seeing how divisive the issue of language is in Belgium already, and being annexed into the Netherlands would only permanently cement French as a minority language in the country. 
a union with Luxembourg is currently off the table for either country. And because you guys know I love to do this, let's take a look at what a united Beneluxian country would look like. The country would contain some of the most historically relevant cities in the rise and advancement of human rights and classical liberalism in the West, such as Brussels, Amsterdam, The Hague, Rotterdam, and Antwerp, although most likely either Amsterdam or Brussels would become the new capital. Around 75% would speak Dutch as a first language, 16% French, 2% Frisian, 2% Luxembourgish or German, and another 5% would speak some other language, meaning that Dutch and French would most likely dominate. The population would be almost 30 million people, giving it around 44% that of France's population, or 36% of Germany's, and the combined total of those with either Dutch, Belgian, or Luxembourgish heritage around the globe outside of Benelux would be over 15 million, or about half that of the region now. Benelux is a really interesting example of a union within a union, and judging by the tremendous similarities between the people of these countries, it would only make sense that the friendships between them last a long time, and maybe one day they can become more than friends, metaphorically speaking. But in the end, it's up to them, and it's certainly exciting to see what their future holds. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the European Union and the Benelux Union, and the people of these countries. As always, thanks for watching. This has been Mason. And I'll see you next time.